G'day, it is time for another equipment autopsy and today it is a Bosch or anti-lock or anti-skid braking system controller. Most modern cars, or all modern cars and most older style cars are fitted with these. Uh, obviously you go back further, anti-skid brakes didn't exist and it was just reliance on driver skill to pull the vehicle up. These things work by pulsing fluid going to the brakes and preventing the wheel from just locking up and relying on the friction of the skidding tyre to pull the vehicle up. Instead it pulses and allows the wheel to rotate a bit, then locks up a bit more and bites in. And it actually does reduce the braking distance considerably. Obviously they wouldn't use them if they didn't work. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is pulling it to bits. I don't know what it came out of. It's got part numbers all over it, but no real details on what it came out of. Yeah, it's just made by Bosch in Germany. That's the main electrical connector up here. You got MC1 and MC2 there, which is master cylinder. Left front, right front, and there should be rear brakes. Oh, yeah, rear brakes operate off one tube on this vehicle. There's only one outlet splitting off, probably at the rear of the car. And obviously independent front brakes, left and re right front. So let's start pulling covers off. This one's been sitting in muddy water for a while, so it's probably full of muck. But you'll get the uh, you get the idea of how it'll work. Different screwdrivers for this one though. There's one little screw in the top there. Okay. Well, they use Torx screws on these, so you've got to dig up your old Torx bits for sets. I rarely have to use Torx bits apart from old computer drives and things. Uh, cover there, I think. There we go. Oh, right, yeah, there's the ABS relays. Look like cube relays. They want to come out. Yeah, big screwdriver. These things are flooded and wrecked, so I'm not going to kill them by prying them out. Yep. I'll open them up later. Not much else there. One more screw on the top though. Two more. It's all plastic. ribbon cables and things and it looks like solenoids along there. One, two, three, four, five and six. Obviously they control the flow of brake fluid going through and just pulse. Open, close, open, close. I'll try and remove them. It looks like they're pressed in there though with sleeves and probably locked tight. So it might be a bit tricky if not impossible. Okay, well there ain't much on the other side that I can remove. All these things are pressed in. It's just one of those sealed assemblies. Uh, some pistons or something retained by clips. Can't get them out. I know that looks like an Allen socket uh, rub screw, but it's not. It's some kind of weird looking Allen drive. Never seen one before in my life. But I haven't got the motor released, sort of. It's still both electrically connected. Just knock 
that off. There we go. I believe the motor. Oh yeah. It's a 12 volt DC motor. Don't know what it's supposed to do though. Oh, I see. That oscillates from one side to the other, varying, I guess, rear brake, front brake, so it does that. That's a cam, not a bloody bearing. The end of that shaft's ground eccentric. So all that does is oscillate. It moves the piston back and forth, back and forth. That's the pulsing that you feel when you hit the brakes and your ABS kicks in, like on a wet surface. And that's when ABS really helps. If you're hydroplaning, it breaks that hydroplane and lets the tyres rotate a bit and purge the water. Unless your tyres are actually worn below minimum level, in which case ABS won't save you. Cool. So, that's about it. If in doubt, find something that sort of fits and make it fit. part of that piston assembly. assembly, it's got a filter screen on it and it's still got brake fluid in it. Underneath. Oh yeah, there we go. The valve. the other valve. One's front, one's rear, and it just alternates between the two. Closer look at one of the valves. just a filter screen. That's crimped on. Three points. Hmm. Basic cube relay. 